another edition of TTN News 6. We're excited to have you today. Uh, get closer to spring and we're ready to go. So let's get into your news at a glance. We've got headline news. We've got Chef's Corner with Mr. Terrence, even though I tried to cut it out. Around town, local update with Miss Connie. This day in history with Mr. Sam. Sports news with Mr. Eric. Local weather outlook. Created by Mr. Mm -hmm. Charles, but I'll take over for today. And mm -hmm. Pop Culture Insider with Miss Ashley. Let's mm -hmm. go. Here's your headline mm -hmm. news. As you can see, we've got our Roar Bucks in the news. We've got some great Roar Bucks money on top there with Torrent Tiger. Mm -hmm. uh, also, Mr. Clark there in the middle. He's, a, he's as cool mm -hmm. as a $3 bill, I think. Is that a saying? I don't know. Uh, we're going to have the traveling roar cart coming around to classrooms. Oh, let me go back here. Sorry. Uh, uh, that was a link. Uh, oh, I'm all over the place today, Torrent Tiger. Yeah. I'm sorry. Let's see if I can get it together. There we go. As you know, roar bucks can be earned in a number of ways for both per in person and virtual learners. Uh, maybe some of you have already won a few Roar Bucks through some of our online games and competitions. Roar Bucks can be redeemed for a variety of awesome prizes. Yeah, we'll see Mr. Charles for that. I think he's got some of the Roar Store down here in just a second. I'll show you. For every 10 Roar Bucks, students can be entered into the drawing for Ultimate Torrent Tiger Spirit Package. Let's click on this link real quick. Mm -hmm. Here is your PBIS Roar Store new items, and we'll we'll just click a few of these. Previous items are still on the card. Here's another example of your Roar Bucks that you could receive. We have some character Frisbee discs. Looks like Batman, and uh, what do we got there? Paw Patrol, and some other great characters. Captain America. We've got snacks like pudding cups. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't love pudding cups? Mm -hmm. All different flavors. Miss Amy finds her way onto the two dollar roar yeah. buck. You could get yourself a light up toy for the end of your pen. We've got some glow in the dark toys, maybe even stretchy there. Interesting mermaids, werewolves, dragons, uh, squishy balls, sensory balls. Those are nice, those are fun. Uh, mini basketballs, NBA approved. There's Mr. Clark back on the three dollar bill. He's worth all of $3, in my opinion. There's some flarp. That's some noisy slime. I won't tell you what type of noises it makes. You can figure that out for yourself. Uh, sun catcher kits, kind of an art project. Uh, you put those in your window. They're really fun, beautiful. Uh, some more slime. Of course, Mr. Clark goes along with slime. Uh, matchbox cars. Who doesn't love those? Hey, there's our buddy, Mr. Kevin. He's on the $4 bill. Mm -hmm. He likes some kinetic sand. Man, my daughter has kinetic sand. I like it way better than Play-Doh. Less messy. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just really cool stuff. If you haven't seen kinetic sand, you should get this with your Roar Bucks. Uh, figurine surprise bags. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what's in there. I guess it's a surprise. Uh, Slinkies, an all-time history favorite. Mr. Sam could tell you more about that. Breakout beasts have no idea what they are, but it looks like there's dragon eggs inside. And we finally, we've got the uh, $5 bill for Tiger. Mm -hmm. It's on there. And you can get yourself with that, possibly uh, mm -hmm. even some of these nice movies mm -hmm. and videos. Looks like some, some classics and some cool ones on there. Maybe a couple I haven't even seen yet. Mm -hmm. Oh, stuffed animals, books. Look mm -hmm. at that. Star Wars mask. Is that. Uh, Let's see. Darth something. I don't know. I can't remember. Wow. Look at what else we got there. Star Wars figures and other figurines. Battle Royale. More Star Wars toys. That is about it. But my Torrent Tigers, can you believe how much stuff you can get? That looks awesome. Start collecting those roar bucks as much as you can. All right, enough mm. with Roar Bucks. It's time for Chef's Corner with our favorite chef, Mr. Terrence. Mr. Terrence, are you with us? I'm with you. Thank you, All Mr. Right. Eric. Good morning, everybody. 
Let's head off to our next slide. Get our ABC cards ready. All right, we got a question up here that says, what is a cold cut? Is it number A, all these deli meats over here? Or is it B, looks like somebody putting a Band-Aid over their fin finger, it's winter outside, some cold air blowing on it. Is it A or is it B? What is a cold cut? I see Miss Ashley holding up a B. A is across the board so far. Other than that, Destiny's holding up an A. Julia's holding up an A. If you chose A, you are correct. You are correct. A cold cut is a variety of deli meats. And why are we talking about deli meats today? Next slide, please, Mr. Eric. It is National Cold Cut Day. Mm -hmm. My fingers are cold and I cut my finger. <laughs> All right, let's play that slide real quick, Mr. Eric. Is there any volume? Uh, not on my end. It's all right. It's just a, it's some cold cut jokes. <laughs> Mm. It's some cold cut jokes. Yeah, some different cold cuts. It's National Cold Cut Day. It's a perfect day. Mm. And we're almost at lunchtime mm. if you haven't eaten it yet to make yourself a cold cut sandwich with a variety of meats. Mm. If you don't feel like making your own, we can go over to our next slide and we can go to a restaurant and get one. And my restaurant mm. review for the mm. week to get an amazing mm. cold cut sandwich mm. is at Mike's Deli in downtown Chelsea, mm. Michigan. They specialize in sandwiches. Um, I know a few of the Torrent transition team members. If Mr. Miles is there, I know he's been to Mike's Deli. <laughs> uh, it's 22.9 miles from the Torrent Center in downtown Chelsea, Michigan. What do I recommend? I recommend the Wolverine, which is a roast beef sandwich. I add a little horseradish to mine. I like things a little spicy. Uh, I also recommend a Stingray. It's a nice turkey sandwich. I believe that's one of Miles's favorites there as well. I could be wrong. Uh, fun fact about, you going to say something, Miles? No. Fun fact about um, huh? Mike's Deli, they use Zingerman's bread for their sandwiches. Uh, Zingerman's is a place in Ann Arbor. They specialize in making breads and serving food, but their bread is really good. So that is it for me this week. Thank you. Back to you, Mr. Eric. Thank you, Mr. Terrence. That stingray looks delicious. I'm going to go right along with Mr. Miles on that one. Okay, it's time for Around Town with Miss Connie. Miss Connie, have at it. Hi, everyone. Hey, I was wondering, have you any of you seen any of these birds in your backyard? Either a robin, a crow, or a bluebird? And it has to be like recently. Have you seen any of these in the last couple of weeks? Yes or no? Yeah, I see a lot of people telling me yes. Yeah, they are back. And I have one more question for you. Is it light A or B dark when you come to school now? Yes, again, I see lots of A's. And I get here about an hour and a half before the rest of you and the students get here and it is light out when I get here. Eric, can you go to the next slide, please? All of these are signs of spring. Spring is not too far away. And Mr. Eric, if you will click on the frog, let's see if this will work for us. And we may have a volume issue, but that's all right. We're just going to walk through it anyways. We're going to see a short video about other signs of spring. So they are going on a nature hike, and even though you don't see it just looking out, in that picture, there are a lot of signs of spring. You're starting to see insects coming out, and in a minute, you'll see a um, 
ant. You'll see grasses that are and mosses that are starting to come through. If you pull back some of the um, dried up grasses, you'll see some new growth. Frogs will start coming out this time, a little early in March yet, but another week or two, you will start listening for the frogs. Growing up, my mother always said you had to hear them croak three times. And before warm weather's here to stay, I've been trying to disprove that for four years and it has been correct every year. You will see um, close to buildings, you will see weeds and other grasses starting to grow. Crocus and daffodils will soon be um, coming up. Crocus are the early spring flowers. We can have crocus bloom even if there's snow on the ground. And then on some of the trees, you're going to start seeing tiny buds beginning to grow. And they show you some more of the grasses. Some of more of the moss. Moss is starting to turn green. And the earliest plant other than the crocus is the strawberry. So if you know someone has a strawberry patch or wild strawberries, you can start to see them leaf up. These are crocuses they're showing you now. And they're very short flower. Come in a variety of color. And you see he's pulling back some of the dead grass to show you the new growth underneath. And then some more of the early spring flowers. Yeah, lilies come a little later, but the greens come early. And it's important as these um, grasses and flowers start that we don't uncover them too quickly because the um, dead leaves and other debris that's on your yard actually help keep their roots warm. So that's it, Eric, if you'll go back. So what I am challenging all of you to do is go for a walk mm. this week mm. and see what signs of spring you can find because there's a lot of them. You can even listen in early morning when you go outside mm. during the winter time. If you mm. went outside, it's very quiet. But now when you go outside, mm. you can start hearing the birds singing to one mm. another. So go out there, find some signs of spring and send um, your teacher a picture. That's it for me, Eric, back to you. Thank you, Miss Connie. I have definitely been noticing the birds singing outside and it's uh, it's definitely a welcome sound. So I'm excited. Okay, it's March 3rd and it's time for this day in history. You know who's up there on the helm of the boat ready to give you the information. It's Mr. Sam. Have a way, Mr. Sam. All right, all my torn people. We've got some interesting historical facts for today. We've got a couple hints of um, what we're going to be discussing today by looking at this title page. And then, of course, we've got some other icons off to the side. So we'll go ahead because today is March 3rd. And we'll see what happens this day in history. You can go ahead and turn to our next slide. Sir. All right, as you can see, we got a whole lot of good stuff going on here. We're going to focus on our red boxes first, which is up in the top left. We see those two lovely ladies over there. We'll go ahead and talk about them right now. It says, on this day in 1887, Ann Sullivan, she's the lady on the right, begins teaching two-year-old Helen Keller using her touch teaching technique. Now, Helen Keller was a young lady who lost both her hearing and her sight at the at the age of, uh, what was it? She was 19 months old. So this was really unheard of. She was not able to 
<laughs> and C, and they still had to figure out a way to educate her. So <laughs> Sullivan took on that challenge and of course bringing that whole <laughs> touch uh, teaching techniques into play, which was very, very effective. Um, and of course, with yeah. Helen Miller, she really flourished and eventually she ended up graduating from college. Can you believe that? Not being able to hear or see and she was still able to receive a college degree. That's how awesome mm -hmm. Sullivan was. Definitely teacher of the century, mm -hmm. in my opinion. But with uh, all that, we'll go ahead and slide and look at, looking at the, mm -hmm. the uh, um, on this day in history in 1845, Florida becomes the seventh mm -hmm. state mm -hmm. union, or as we refer to it now, mm -hmm. as the United States of America. Now you're probably wondering what's up with that map. Mm -hmm. Well, back in 1845, the United mm -hmm. States looked a little different. And of course you can see the red circle in the arrow, arrow that is the state mm -hmm. of Florida, which it still has the same shape, mm -hmm. but you can see farther out west, mm -hmm. We don't have that much going on. We don't even have California yet. That's still a part of Mexico. And of course, that's before we started building all those um, um, tracks out there that brought us out to the West. And of course, now we have states established now. All right, on to our next one. I've got to move my away so I can see it. Um, so we have Dr. Frederick Banting. I'm looking at my purple mm -hmm. box. Sorry. Uh, Dr. Frederick Banting and Dr. Charles Best discover insulin on this day in 1921. Mm -hmm. Of course, this was a huge discovery because we had all mm -hmm. these individuals who were diabetic, who were becoming ill and you know, actually dying. And uh, these gentlemen, mm -hmm. as well as a couple other colleagues, mm -hmm. were able to discover insulin and then administer it mm -hmm. to individuals mm -hmm. who were diabetic. And of course, Dr. Frederick Banting, he could have made a lot of money off of this, but he chose to give away the insulin for free because he believed in people becoming better and you know in health than him making a profit. Now that is a really cool doctor. We don't always see those types of things going on in today's time, sadly. But all right, we'll then move on to our right below uh, Dr. Banting and Dr. Mm -hmm. Dr. Best. We're looking at our nice American flag here. The Star Spangled Banner officially becomes the, U the United States National Anthem by Congressional Resolution on this day in 1931. Now they did have the song established prior to that, but it didn't become the official anthem until um, March 3rd, 1931. Before it used to just be kind of like a folk song that would be sung in celebration at pubs back in the day, as well as um, after um, victories in, in some of those battles. And then our last historical fact for today is gonna to be in our green boxes. We have the American Telephone and Telegraph Company, which we refer to as AT&T. It was incorporated by American Bell on this day in 1885. Now American Bell was another phone and telegraph uh, agency. Of course, that was brought by, um, what was it? Um, what was his name? Gr um, Graham Bell. Uh, what was his name? Alexander. Alexander. Yeah, the inventor of the telephone. That was his company uh, prior to them creating the American Telephone and Telegraph Company. Then they were able to phase out American Bell completely, but they used a lot of their lines to be able to get to that. And of course, we still have AT&T today. Some of you may even have that as your phone provider as well. Okay, with all that, I know a lot of talk in a little time, we'll go ahead for a quiz. Now, the question is, mm -hmm. AB cards, ladies and gentlemen, sorry. Mm -hmm. The question is, what was the name of the song mm -hmm. that became the official anthem of the United States of America? Was it A, the Star Spangled Banner, mm -hmm. or Rockin' in the Free World by Neil Young? I'll ask it one more time. What what was the name of the song that became the official anthem of the United States of America? A, mm. the Spangled Banner, or B, Rockin' in the Free World by Neil Young. I'm gonna go ahead and get a minute to look in. See, we've got A from Miss Connie, A from Miss mm. Sarah, we got A from Destiny, um, we got A from, mm. oh, we got David, we got 
Mm -hmm. Parents, Julia, what, what you got? Anything over there, Julia? What, you're thinking A or B? Is it SARS mm -hmm. or rocking in the free world? Let me see. You can also take yourself off mute too, because it's easier to say A or B. Oh, there we go. Yes, A. So if you selected A, you're absolutely correct. Give yourself a round of applause, a pat on your back. Mm -hmm. Our official anthem is the Star Spangled Banner. Sadly, not rocking in the free world, even though it is a very good song, but it is not our official anthem. And that is today in history. Back to you, Mr. Eric. Thank you so much, Mr. Sam. I always leave this section feeling very informed and knowledgeable. Moving on, though, it's time for your sports news update. We're talking about MHSA sports. Here's a few of those that you're looking at men's and women's basketball wrestling cheerleading competitive cheer gymnastics hockey skiing mm -hmm. swimming and i think i already said wrestling but here are your winter sports that are continuing right now in the state we have uh those sports here's your schedule for the finals for each of these sports i won't go through them all but most of them are ending at the end of this month in march and some of them are ending uh, in early April. We'll talk about why there's a little bit of an issue there, but uh, and you can see up some of the up north sports like skiing uh, have already actually ended their finals because the snow is beginning to uh, head out of here. So here's your finals. Somewhere around April 10th, all the finals for winter will be complete, and then that will move us into the spring sports timeline. The MHSA in the state of Michigan have just decided that all spring sports can begin practicing on March the 22nd with com competitions to start March 26th. That's only four days after they're allowed to start practice. But those are the official dates moving forward because of COVID. We've had to kind of jam our sports together this year. Um, all spring sports will be ending somewhere around June 19th for sports like baseball, softball, and girls soccer. But you can also see some of the other events down there, like track and field and tennis, that will also be going on this spring. Uh, the council eliminated the preseason downtime restrictions. Typically, there would have been a couple of weeks uh, before competition would start, but they've eliminated that for this year. Out-of-season activity currently permitted for spring sports, including general conditioning with unlimited number of students, can continue through March 21st. So uh, it's an interesting season. It's an interesting year. Uh, we're going to have winter and spring sports kind of intermixing in the end. And the real tough part is going to be for those athletes who are finishing up a winter sport and going into a spring sport and how they're going to juggle those. So very interesting, but exciting uh, that sports are able to uh, continue and get going. And we're going to get through them for all those athletes so they don't lose any time uh, this season. Uh, here's your Big Ten update. Michigan took a huge upset last night uh, against Illinois, losing 76 to 53 at home. That moves their record to 18 and three on the season. Uh, still an extraordinary season, and I've actually they've actually moved to number two in the nation. I've got it there as number three, but they're actually number two in the nation currently. Uh, their next game is going to be against Michigan State at home. You can see that game tomorrow at 7 p.m. on ESPN. Uh, and then just below that, we've got Michigan State, who took a 64-58 to win over Indiana last night. They've greatly improved their record to 15-10, and winning the last six out of six games that they've had. Um, and their next game, and this is not – you're not seeing doubles here. This is actually, I don't remember the last time I've ever seen something like this. Michigan and Michigan State are going to play tomorrow night, and then they're going to turn right around and play each other again on Sunday. So uh, three days between uh, meetings, where they're going to they're going to play in Ann Arbor first, and then they're going to go to East Lansing on Sunday. And you can see that Sunday game at 4.30 p.m. on your local CBS station. Mm. It'll be an exciting week for Michigan athletics. So oh, here's your sports quiz question. What do you think will be the outcome of these basketball games? Will it A, be Michigan State taking a win in both games? Will it be B, Michigan State and Michigan splitting the two games? Or will it be C, 
and probably the right choice. Will it be Michigan winning both of those games? What do you think, Torrent Tigers? And if I could get a little help out there, because I cannot see my friends, uh, to let me know what they are voting for. I've got it. B from us. B. We've got A's. We've got C's. We've got C's. B's. C's. It's divided. It's all over the map. Oh, my. Wow. Well, great job, Torrent Tigers. Unfortunately, if you didn't say C, the correct answer is C. Thank you very much. Just kidding. This is an opinion poll. Everybody wins on this one. If you said A, you could be correct. If you said B, you could be correct. If you said C, you could be correct. I'm going to take my vote that everyone that said C is probably going to be correct. We'll find out what happens. Anything can happen, as we've seen over the last week in college basketball. Good job, Torrent Tigers. Let's move on. I'm going to continue rolling through, and I'm going to help Mr. Mr. Charles do his weather report for today. What are the seasons is the title? And you need to have your weather cards out and ready to go. I'm going to click on the question mark here, and it's going to take us over to our local weather. This is a nice forecast, as you can see. Maybe you've been out today. If you haven't, it's going to continue to get better and better throughout the day. You can see our high is going to be 52 degrees. Started out at 24, is going to get up to 52. Almost a 30 degree, degree swing. That's what happens this time of year in Michigan. Uh, but it can happen at any time in Michigan, unfortunately. But we see that big yellow sun. It is. I'm looking out my windows here. It is definitely sunny outside, and it looks great. I can't wait to get out and get a little bit of fresh air here. Uh, shortly. Currently 47 degrees, but on its way to 52. Look down here, and I think we've got, uh, maybe we don't. I can't see the, nope, let's go right here. 10-day forecast. We'll click over there because there's some great weather in store. I'll just quickly go down. We're going to roll through uh, kind of the 40s through the rest of this week, and then into next week, look at these temperatures. We're talking about 55, 60, high 50s. It's going to be a great week next week. Hopefully the ground will continue to thaw. Uh, spring sports will be ready to, to go, and we're going to have some beautiful weather to go out and enjoy. Uh, we all could use some time outside. So get ready for that, Torrent Tigers. It's going to be great. Okay. Looking around here, I'm going to click on Mr. Charles. Looks like he's got a little video in store. You guys can't hear this audio, can you? No, Mr. Eric. I'm sorry. I'm going to play this through, and I will give you a little bit of details of what's going on here. Spring is on its way. They're talking about getting outside and being able to do some of those spring activities like skateboarding and riding your bikes, things that we cannot do when the snow is on the ground. Did you know that the seasons are due to the tilt of the earth? The earth is actually not straight up and down. It is tilted on an angle. That angle was due to an impact on the earth. They're not sure exactly what, but maybe some kind of meteorite struck the earth. The earth travels around the sun once a year. That's how we signify our year. And based on where we are in that orbit, determines what season that we're in. You can see there that Part of the year, the Earth tilts towards the sun, and the part of the year, the Earth tilts away from the sun. When we're tilted towards the sun, that signifies the summertime, the warmer times of the year. And when we're tilted away from the sun, that gives us our colder times of the year. So fall and winter are tilted away. Spring and summer, we're tilting towards the sun. Based on where we live on the Earth. On the Earth, uh, you could be towards the North Pole, you can be towards the South Pole, or you can be somewhere closer to the equator. 
uh, depending on where you are in those locations, you get a little bit different heat or cold depending on the time of the year. So that, that tells us a little bit why it's not the same temperatures all year round. It has everything to do with the tilt of our earth and our location on the planet. So I'm sorry you guys couldn't hear that, but hopefully you got a little bit of idea from watching that and, and from what I had to add, to let you know why we have our seasons. Okay, I think that is all for our weather report today. We're gonna continue to move on. Oh, excuse me, we've got a question here and we're gonna ask all of our viewers, what is your favorite season of the year? Do you like the winter time when we're tilted away from the sun? Do you like the spring and the summer when we're tilted towards? It's gonna be A for winter, B for spring, C for summer, or D for autumn, also known as fall. What do you think, Torn Tigers? Hold up your A, B, C, or you can sign D if you don't have a D card. I see some Ds, I see Cs, I see Bs. Oh, we've got maybe some split decisions out there. Again, this, there's no right or wrong answer to this question. Um, we've got some varied opinions. We've got some people that enjoy different seasons for different reasons, but everybody seems to have one that they like to pick out. And whether yours is the wintertime, springtime, summertime, or autumn time, you are correct. So we hope you can enjoy every season, but we specifically love um, some of our favorites. Interesting weather facts for the season. At the North Pole, the first day of spring marks the beginning of six months of un un uninterrupted daylight. At the South Pole, the first day of spring marks the beginning of six months of un uninterrupted daylight. Uh, ancient pagans celebrated midsummer with bonfires. It was believed that the crop could grow as high as a couple, as a couple could jump across the fire. Ooh, they must be pretty good jumpers. It was also believed that bonfires would generate magic by boosting the sun's power. Send some of that heat eat up to the sun. Autumn used to used to just be called harvest. The full moon closest to the autumn equinox is known as harvest moon. Harvest is a time when crops are brought from the land um, to the table. Before there was electricity, the bright night of the harvest moon was essentially for farmers harvesting their late year crops. Uh, wintertime here because of snow expands when frozen one inch of rain could equal 10 inches of snow. So there's your interesting facts about each season of the year. Hope you enjoyed and I hope you are ready to enjoy the spring season that is almost upon us. All right, it's pop culture time. Miss Ash, we're ready for you. Hi guys. So today we are going to talk about a new Disney movie that is coming out and it is called Raya and the Last Dragon. So Mr. Eric, will you click to the next slide, please? Miss Ash, if you'd like me to unshare at any time, maybe no. we can hear your video. It's okay. Um, so I want to know before we get started, do you like to watch movies? Yes or no? No. Yeah. Oh, pretty much everyone's saying yes. Okay. So, Mr. Eric, if you want to go to the next page, we have our trailer. And if you hit play, I'm going to just explain what the movie's about, even though we can't hear it. Um, I'm just going to explain it. Okay. I'll play it. So, this story takes place in the fantasy world of Kumandra. And humans and dragons lived there together as friends. They were in harmony. But sinister monsters known as the Druin or the Drun 
threaten the land and the dragons sacrifice themselves to save humanity. So all of the dragons died to save the people. Now, 500 years later, those same monsters have returned and it's up to a lone warrior, warrior Raya, to find the last dragon in order to stop them. So Raya is our character that has the hat on. So throughout her journey, she's going to learn that it'll take more than dragon magic to save the world. It's going to take trust. And this is the last dragon that she finds. And the story, if you like the movie Moana, it's made by the same people who made Moana and Frozen. So there should probably be some pretty good songs in there. And this movie comes out on March 8th. Which is Monday. Oh, it comes out on Friday, guys. So on March 5th, this movie comes out and it's gonna come out on Disney Plus for premiere if you have that. And it'll be playing in some movie theater. I could watch it in different ways, depending on what works best for your family. So Mr. Eric, will you scooch on to the next slide? And I wanna know, do you think this movie sounds good? Would you want to watch this movie? Miss Connie's room says yes. Mr. Eric says yes. Mr. Terrence says yes. Julia and Molly say yes. Mr. Sam says yes. Oh, SXI5 is saying yes. All right, sounds good. I would too. And Mr. Eric, if you'll click to our last slide. Birthdays this month, we have quite a few of them. On Friday, just in time for the release of Raya and the Last Dragon, is Mr. Miles's birthday. I wonder if that's what he's gonna do to celebrate. On March 7th, which is Sunday, we have our friend Lachelle's birthday. Uh -huh. On March 8th, we have two birthdays. So on Monday, when we have no school, we have two birthdays. Uh -huh. Miss Connie's birthday and Mr. Dave's birthday. On March 22nd, we have AJ's birthday. And our last birthday for the month, unless I missed one, which if I did, let me know, is Mr. Michael's birthday, our friend in SXI5. His birthday is on March 35th. First. So if I missed your birthday, please let me know so I can get it on the schedule for our next TTN6. But otherwise, we wish you all a very happy birthday. And that is it for me, Mr. Eric. That's actually all for us here at TTN News 6. And we are so happy to bring another edition of this to you all. And we want to thank all of our Torrent Tigers for joining us today. And we're going to follow up with this weather and to say, get outside, Torrent Tigers, and get out there and roar. Have a great day and enjoy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. 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 Bye.